Hi, my name is Rebecca Wood, Lebanon Middle School in Kentucky, and this is NASA Now. Hey, I'm Kristen. Today, we're going to catch up with the Voyager 1 spacecraft, which is poised at the edge of our solar system, 18 billion kilometers away, in a region called the heliosphere. Our expert will tell us what the Voyager has observed and how it affects our understanding of the solar system and interstellar space. That's ahead. First, here's what's happening at NASA Now. Using a robot to bag an asteroid. NASA is working on its first ever mission to identify, capture, and relocate an asteroid. Using an uncrewed robotic system, scientists would identify an asteroid that could potentially intersect Earth's path. They would then capture it and relocate it to a more stable orbit. Here, astronauts would travel to the asteroid, explore it, and bring samples back to Earth for further study. This mission could help us learn more about an asteroid's properties, deflect potentially hazardous asteroids, and help develop the techniques needed for future missions. When scientists launched the Voyager spacecrafts in 1977, they dreamed that one day the mission would reach the edge of our solar system. Well, now that dream has become a reality. Lou Mayo, a planetary scientist at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, is here to tell us about the Voyager mission and the amazing data and information we are still receiving an incredible 36 years after it launched. Two Voyager spacecraft are in different parts of the outer solar system. They're exploring the realm of the sun's influence called the heliosphere. And the two Voyagers, we believe from the data we're getting back, are very close to this region called the heliopause, the boundary between the sun's influence and interstellar space. And we've never sent anything into interstellar space before. The distances from the sun for Voyager 1, I think, are about 123 astronomical units. That's 123 times the distance from the Earth to the Sun. And for Voyager 2, I think about a little over 100 astronomical units. There are a lot of questions about what the edge of the solar system looked like. And by edge, now we're talking about the boundary of the, the, the heliopause, the boundary of this, these fields and particles. The Voyagers have uh, entered a region now where there appears to be a uh, much higher magnetic field strength from interstellar space. It was thought that this bubble existed, but the exact properties, the exact size, and so forth of the bubble is um, still a bit of a question. And the Voyagers are now in situ. In other words, they are right there measuring the strength of these fields and particles. The Voyager spacecraft completely rewrote the textbooks on planetary science. The numbers of discoveries are too numerous to get them all in, but I'll touch on a few. The rings of Jupiter were not discovered first on the Earth. They were discovered by the Voyager 1 spacecraft. The volcanoes on Io, a moon around Jupiter, the first object outside of the Earth that we found was actively volcanic. The detailed analysis of the atmosphere of Titan showing it's an, an unbelievably complex and interesting prebiotic atmosphere. The Voyagers uh, both discovered a number of moons. They were able to define the structure of the rings of all the outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, all have rings. We can understand more about the mass of the planet by watching how the spacecraft's trajectory is curved and how its velocity has changed as it flies by that planet. There are no other forces acting on the spacecraft that will continue in a straight line at a constant velocity. But these planets have mass, and therefore they have gravity. And so their gravity, as well as their motion around the sun, pulls on the spacecraft. And from that, we can get a much better idea of how much mass this planet has, and even, to some extent, the distribution of mass inside of that planet or perhaps the moon. 
The Voyager flybys were an essential part of the trajectories for these two missions. The flybys by Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and finally Neptune provided an extra gravity assist for the spacecraft so that you didn't have to have expensive and heavy fuel providing the propulsion. And so we knew exactly where the planets would be because we understand uh, Sir Isaac Newton and we knew exactly how close to fly by those planets to modify the trajectory just in the right way to get us on to the next planet. We knew that whether they would be fully operational or not, the two Voyager spacecraft were not coming back to Earth. They were going to be traveling forever and ever into the uh, void of space between the stars. So the two Voyagers, in a sense, are our ambassadors, our, our, our interstellar ambassadors in space. You've seen that there is more to space than just space. In fact, space is filled with all kinds of matter. Check out this project. Teachers, you and your students can find out what's blowing in the solar wind by analyzing actual data from the Genesis Project. Look for Graph Analysis Genesis, exploring data under the extension activity of NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Be sure to visit our Facebook page and leave a comment. We'll see you next time on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.